Welcome back to Dr. Suchita's interactive class. Today we are going to see one of the uh, physical experiment where we are going to find out isoelectric point of one of the amino acid that is glycine. The readings given in this online practical demonstration are not ideal one. These are given under the condition of COVID-19 situation. They may change in actual practical performation due to chemical error, personal error, temperature and other conditions too. So, we are going to determine the acid and base dissociation constant of given amino acid and hence to find out the isoelectric point of an acid. To determine the isoelectric point, I need to have a pH meter, magnetic stirrer, volumetric flask, bure, tissue paper and the chemicals we are going to utilize is 0.2 molar glycine, 0.4 molar HCl, 1 molar NaOH, formaldehyde, 0.05 molar KHP to standardize pH meter and distilled water. Now, when we take amino acid, when we look at the amino acid, it possesses both acidic and basic or acidic and amino group or we can call it as a chiral center or carbon acts as a chiral center where four different groups are attached to it. So, if carry both acid and amino group, they can therefore form acidic anions and basic anions. The pH at which both these ions are formed is the pH which is defined as isoelectric point. This point we can determine by carrying out a titration of given amino acid that is glycine. If you look at the structure, we can clearly see here that the attached group NH2 and COOH, if we take the anionic form that is if it loses the H plus ion, it form anionic form. It, if it absorbs the H plus ion, it forms cationic form. So, the carboxylic acid group and amino group both are present. So, glycine exists in three different forms that is zwitter ionic form is the central one when both the positive and negative charge are present on the carbon acidic form and basic form. This particular zwitter ionic structure of an uh, uh, given amino acid represents or form at particular pH that is pH 6. This is the theoretical information which is given over here and the equilibrium reaction which happens during this process to give the isoelectric point or to form the acidic form during dissociation and basic form that is to find out the dissociation constant of acidic form and basic form that we can carry out by knowing the half neutralization point during the titration of glycine with respect to NaOH. So, we need to find out we need to find out during these two dissociation constant acidic form and basic form during these two dissociation constant that is pK1 and pK2 where the amino acid react and form salt and acid, amino acid react to form and base and salt. So, these pK1 and pK2 uh, values will give you an isoelectric pH of a given acid. This is an uh, expected ideal graph when we are taking amino acid and reacting it with um, carrying out a titration with the NaOH. So, we need to have a pH meter for this particular titration. This is a power switch, it is digital display. This is a temperature knob because temperature uh, affects the pH or the dissociation of H plus ion. This is a calibration knob. This is a glass electrode. Glass electrode composed of a reference electrode that is silver wire dipped in silver chloride and glass membrane which is made up of sodium oxide, calcium oxide and silicon oxide. This is highly sensitive to carry out the H plus ionic reaction with the solution in which it has been dipped. This is the uh, reaction takes place at the interference surface of this glass membrane. The reference electrode which has been utilized is silver silver chloride that is silver wire dipped in a silver chloride or saturated KCl solution which developed a constant potential which has been combined with the glass electrode and we can represent the uh, electrode in this form as glass electrode reference solution test solution and again the glass electrode. Now how to utilize the pH meter? We have to keep always the glass electrode in contact with the water to remain the active 
you have to make sure that your glass electrode must be dipped in a water before 20 hours so that it will the glass will become active to carry out the exchange of ionic reaction which takes place at the interface of the glass surface join the ph meter put on the power on check out the temperature knob you can visualize you can see that the knob is working and it has representing the room temperature now you have to utilize buffer solution either the ready made buffer solutions are available with ph 7 4 and 9 or you can utilize 0 0.05 molar potassium hydrogen phthalate solution which gives me a constant ph value i can calibrate the given ph meter by dipping the glass electrode in a known ph solution here we have taken 0 0.05 molar potassium hydrogen phthalate solution in which I am going to dip the electrode and will measure the pH. Just look at the digital display and calibration knob and you can check out that the pH observed for the given solution is yes 0.4.005. Now you can do the calibration with the asymmetric potential that is at pH 9 as well as it automatically it will show when you dip in water at pH 7. Once you standardize at pH 4 and pH 9, it will automatically show, it is expected to show the pH 7 at automatically at when you deep in a distilled water. Once the calibration process is over, now this pH meter is ready to carry out the further experimental reading. Wash the electrode with the distilled water. Now, this is an experimental setup expected for your today's experiment that a burette filled with 0.1 molar NaOH and beaker containing the glycine solution 0.2 molar 20 ml plus 10 ml water and 10 ml of 0.4 molar HCl. This solution along with the magnetic stirrer is ready and attached to the pH meter. Now you have to measure the pH every time during this particular titration every 0.3 ml of addition of NaOH you have to measure the pH of solution. Yes, you have to utilize magnetic stirrer. You will measure the pH before addition of NaOH and after every equivalent 0.3 ml addition of NaOH to this solution which you have taken along with the glycine. So these are the few readings reported over here due to this online practical. Uh, I request you to carry out this delta pH, delta V, delta pH upon delta V calculation and mean V calculation. Mean V you can calculate just by taking the addition of these two volumes divided by 2. Delta BH you can differentiate, you can find out the difference between the uh, highest and lower to find out delta pH value. Delta V, yes, you can find out difference between the volume as 0.3 will remain constant. You have to take at least 30 readings for this particular titration to uh, carry out further work with respect to graph to find out the PK1 value and PK2 value. This particular titration we are going to perform in the same way just instead of 10 ml water we are taking 5 ml of formaldehyde and 5 ml of water. The reaction during this process we can find out the pK2 value by performing the titration in the similar way where we are going to carry out addition of 0.3 ml of NaOH. Again here I have provided the readings to you with respect to this particular um, solution which we are going to titrate with. 0.1 molar NaOH. Utilize this reading to calculate pK1 and pK2 values. Now you have to plot a graph with respect to these reading where pH versus ml of alkali added. You have to draw this graph. You will get this graph. The first red color graph is without formaldehyde the first titration which you have done. You can find out the value of A. Value of A is nothing but what? first equivalence point. A by 2 you can find out half equivalence point or half neutralization point. The half neutralization point A by 2 ml you will find out over here somewhere over here. The corresponding pH value will give you pK1 that is dissociation constant 1 for your glycine. Second dissociation constant you can find out from the second titration which you have done with formaldehyde where you will get the nature of the plot in this way you will find out the value of B, okay, B minus A divided by 2, 
B minus A divided by 2 plus A. Corresponding pH value you will find out PK2. Substitute these values in this equation to find out PI that is isoelectric point PI equal to PK1 plus PK2 divided by 2. Report all the readings over here in your result table as first equivalence point, second equivalence point and isoelectric point. Checklist. When you perform offline practical, you have to check out whether my pH meter I have standardized very well. Then check out whether you have reported the results in tabular form. To obtain the accurate result, always utilize dilute solutions. You are minimizing the usage of chemical over here. So it will be a green route and titration without indicator. It is and one of the advantage of pH metry. So you, this is a little bit assignment. Few questions I have given over here where you have to utilize the this particular information uh, when you are going to give the online oral practical examination. These assignment questions will be very useful for you. You can revise the topic of pH metry for basic concept and MCQ based on pH metry in, uh, which are provided in this particular link. Thank you.